Hey there, this is Julio, and today I want to talk about the number one mistake that teams are making when moving into microservices. I have seen many teams fall into this same mistake over and over again, and it's only going to cause trouble down the way. So check this out. Imagine that we are working in kind of a gaming system where we have a bunch of players and players want to be able to send friend requests to each other, right? So for instance, we have this player over here. He wants to friend another player. So what we do is we're going to be sending a post request to what we call the friends microservice. This is the one microservice that has just one REST API to send a, to receive friend requests. And his only purpose is to be able to keep track of these friend requests. Right. But unfortunately, it really doesn't know how to send notifications uh, to the users or to the other players. Right. So for that, we have stand up uh, another microservice that's called the notifications microservice. Right. So this is the one microservice that really knows how to send these notifications either via email or via uh, uh, web sockets or whatever it makes sense. Uh, it knows how to send these notifications. So of course, now we need to have uh, the friends microservice somehow communicate the request into notifications. Right. So that we can send notifications. And so the teams behind each of these microservices talk to each other and they decide that the best way to do this is to stand up just another REST API, in this case in the notifications microservice, right, via which the friends microservice can send the request into notifications. And then, of course, notifications will take that request and will go ahead and send the notification, let's say via uh, just an email. And that looks just fine, right? And this is what teams will usually do uh, to start with. Uh, but I can tell you that right here we have the number one mistake. And what is that mistake? Coupling, right? So coupling is a big mistake that people is making when starting to make communication across microservice. And that is because this is not, I mean, this is not just an improc system where we have just one class talking to another class or one DLL talking to another DLL, everything just running nicely in just one box. Now we have a distributed system where many things could go wrong. So many things are going to cause that the notifications microservice is just going to be down at some point, right? So now, what kind of things could cause this, right? So you say, well, a few things. For instance, a startup box, right? So have you ever made a mistake so that you have a missing configuration in your microservice, right? So when, whenever it starts, it right away, it just crashes, right? And you only discover that in production. So that's one of the things that could happen, right? And that could cause the other microservice to not be able to talk to the notifications microservice, for instance. Uh, we could have also networking issues because this is, a, I mean, <laughs> this, is, this is the cloud, right? So there could be multiple issues why for some reason, we cannot reach notification microservice, or for some reason, the phrase microservice cannot just get out into the network and reach out anything uh, by itself or something in the middle, right? So network is just unreliable, as, as we all know. And another issue could be dependency issues, right? So what if notification microservice has a dependency, let's say, in a database service, and that database service, for some reason, is just overwhelmed with requests, so it starts throttling the notification microservice, right? At that point, notifications is just going to slow down completely, and it's going to prevent the friends microservice so from being able to actually get any results from it, right? Then we could also have scalability issues, right? So now we could have notifications microservice being bombarded with a lot of requests from not just this microservice, but many other microservices, right? And so at that point, it just, it can reply on time and sometimes it cannot reply at all, right? And so just like that, there could be multiple issues that could cause notification microservice from not being able to work properly. And of course, what that's going to cause is that, well, that REST API call fails and then our friends microservice is just going to fail because it cannot really uh, get the correct response and potentially that's going to result in a, in a problem back into the client and the client, well, now we have a, a sad client, right? So a bunch of problems. So how do we get out of this uh, problem with this big mistake of having coupling between these microservices? Well, let's see. So let's say uh, we have, again, our scenario here, but this time our friend microservice is not going to just go ahead and uh, make a REST API call into notifications. What we're going to do is to introduce another player here, which is going to be, let's say, a queue. I mean, it's just one, one idea, right? So, and the queue allows us to have this kind of decoupling between the center of the request and whoever is going to receive it, right? In this case, we can have now the friend microservice send a message via this queue, right, with the friend request. Right, so we send a message into the friend request, uh, into sorry, into the queue, and then the queue uh, eventually, whenever notifications microservice is ready, will go ahead and send down that notification, so the notification microservice can go ahead and, and do the job. And why this this allows us to, to decouple things? Because well, now if notification microservice is just down, right, which could happen, it will happen uh, for sure uh, many times. Um, now it is not really a problem uh, for the friends microservice, which is still up because now it can keep sending the friend requests, uh, that we, but they are just going to start piling up 
into our queue, right? So the queue will always be available, right? So make sure you get a, a highly available queue, but uh, for sure the message will keep piling up there. And at this point, uh, of course, I mean, we can still send requests and our client can still be keep sending requests into friends and nobody is going to be complaining uh, about everything because the system keeps working from the point of view of the friends microservice, right? And then of course, eventually the notification microservice will be back up. I mean, people fix the issue uh, or the networking has been fixed or whatever it is, it gets fixed and then we are back into a good, uh, a good shape. So this is how you fix that, that one mistake. And this is the approach that people don't really think about too much when they start embracing microservices, right? Because it's logical. I mean, you come from that other uh, world where everything is connected. Uh, but in this, in this case, you do want to move into this multi-couple approach. And of course, that's going to bring in this, this one concept, which is autonomy, which is the main thing that you want to achieve for microservices. Each microservice wants to be as autonomous as possible, right? So that you can, uh, so you can move fast and you don't go into these issues where if one microservice is not behaving well, the other microservice will not be behaving well uh, as well. All right. And so now we know uh, what is the, the right way to, to fix this issue. Let's go into a practical example and see in code how uh, or what's, what, what are the actual issues that you can you could have and how to solve them by moving into this other way of, of working. All right. So let's go into here into my VS Code instance over here. And so I have a little small, simple implementation of the friends microservice and notification microservice, right? So let me show you that very quickly. So we have friends here and then we have uh, our problem.cs. And as you can see, all we have is just one, uh, one endpoint here, right? This one endpoint here, uh, we just uh, listens in friend requests. And what is receiving is just one uh, DTO here, uh, where we're calling it add friend request. Add friend request is defined down here. It only receives the asking player, so who wants to friend, and then target player, who, which is the player that we want to send the request into, right? And so that's all that it receives. And then as soon as, as, as soon as we receive that request, we will go ahead and uh, create uh, the entity, which we have stored over here, the friend request entity. We assign an ID to the entity and then just store that request into what is right now just a simple in-memory array, right? Imagine this is a database, but uh, for now it's just a little in-memory list. And so we store that and then we will go ahead and actually communicate uh, to our uh, uh, the other microservice, right? And we're doing that via this client here, which as you can see, is being injected in into this endpoint, the notifications client. And so what's going on in that notifications client? So let's do F12, go over there. And as you can see, and let me collapse this for a moment, notifications client is just a simple client that's receiving HTTP client via an independence injection. And then all it does is receives the asking player, receives the target player, and then it prepares uh, the message or the actual the, the request that's going to be sent into the other microservice and makes a post call, a REST API post call uh, into notification microservice. And of course, this is the one thing that, that we don't want, right? So we are making that coupling by doing this. But then what's going on on the other side? So let's take a quick look at, uh, and by the way, we do have notifications contracts, which is the place where we have, we are I defining this send email notification a request that or contract that's been sent from one microservice to the other, right? Uh, but then we have the notification microservice down here. And this one here, uh, all it has is again, one endpoint, as you can see, here's just one map host endpoint, right? Which is under notifications, it receives that, uh, that request, right? And then it will go ahead and just, just logs the message. And then here we are, what we're doing is just uh, using the SendGrid uh, library uh, that allows you to use the SendGrid uh, Azure service uh, that, uh, I mean, pretty simply, it just connects uh, to the service, prepares a message with a, a, an email message with a from and then a subject and then a, a, the actual body, right? And then who is, is going to be sent to, and then it will go ahead and just send the email uh, using SendGrid uh, down into the client, right? And so, and that's the end of it. Uh, but like we said, uh, this does have problems, right? So let me go ahead and close this and close that. And let's go ahead and open our terminal here. And, and I'm going to collapse that for a moment. And I have two terminals here. So one of them is for the friends microservice on the left side. On the right side, we have notifications microservice. So let's see what could happen. So let's go ahead and do .NET run on friends. And let's do .NET run on notifications. And now we have both microservices up and running and we want to now uh, try out this request. So I have prepared a little request here. So let me open that up right there. And so I'm going to send a request into friends, right? So that a uh, player one here, it uh, wants to send a friend request to player two, right? So I'm going to go ahead and hit send. 
and well things are working properly and you can see that uh, the request was sent on the left side uh, into uh, for player two and then on the right side uh, we saw that uh, we received a notification for player two and the notification i mean the notification request for player two and then the notification was sent via email into player two uh, at play.com in this case right so everything looks good so uh, so and this is this is what most people will just do but uh here's the problem what if for any reason uh notification microservice is down right so stopping it so now it is completely down so then what happens well let's go ahead and try this out again so now we're going to send a request into friends microservice friends microservice now is trying to reach out into notifications but it is not there so what happens well we get this very nice error on the right side as you can see uh, no connection could be made because the target machine refused it right uh, cannot reach it uh, because well the service is down so it's expected and because of that now we have this awful error that's going to go all the way back into the client and it's, it, just, it just broke the entire experience for no reason because a friends a friends was actually able to keep track of that request uh, but it's not it was not able to send a send notification and of course this is not the the, the only case uh, where things can go uh, wrong right so for instance uh, we also have and let me let me go ahead and stop my servers for a moment and uh, let me go now into notifications into program cs over here and we're going to go ahead and just add a little bit of a delay uh let's say over here to simulate the the fact that for instance uh, notifications could be uh, having a uh, some sort of uh, issue that's causing it to just slow down because perhaps there are just so many requests and so it just can't uh can't keep uh, handling the request at the speed that they should so what we're going to do here is just say um wait does that delay right so we're going to be delaying um for time span that from seconds we're going to do from seconds and let's say we're going to delay for 10 seconds right so just 10 seconds just like that all right and now let's see what happens right so we're going back into our terminals over here right and we're going to go ahead and clean this we'll do dot net run and then we'll clean this and we'll do dot net run also right and so we are going back into our request.http file over here and let's go ahead and send a request right so we send a request okay into uh our friends market service uh but this time uh, i mean notification market service is working on it but it's just taking too much time and friends market service was not a not happy with waiting so much time because we have configured a specific timeout right that i think it's like three or five seconds and so the, the time that notification is taking is just way too much and of course now we're getting this task cancel exception the request was cancelled due to the configured timeout five seconds yeah five seconds elapsing right so now once again friends microservice was broken because the notification microservice just took too much time to process a request right which is, is fairly common and so just like this there could be many many other issues that, that could happen so you don't want to have this coupling at all you want to decouple things completely so let's see what we can do to actually do that decoupling so i'm going to stop my servers over here close my terminal close this and then perhaps close this and close that okay so let's collapse all of this so what we're going to do is to use uh, two things we're going to be using um, a message broker right and the one that i'm going to be using here is called RabbitMQ. it's uh, i think it's one of the easiest uh, message brokers to get started with and one of the easiest ones also to work with your with in your local machine right but of course you could be using anything else like service bus or you could use kafka you could use many many other stuff uh, but let's use RabbitMQ in this case and i already have that up and running in my box in as a docker container so what we want to do now is to actually connect our microservices into and for that we're going to be using a very nice library that is known as mass transit and it's a library that allows you to very easily start uh, interacting with your message worker without having to write too much code so let me show you how that works so let's start with the notifications microservice this is the one that's going to receive the message right so let's go ahead and open our terminal over here and say let me collapse this for a moment and expand this and in notification side i'm going to just say dot net add package mass transit that rabbitmq so that's the one package that allows you to start interacting uh, with the rabbitmq using the mass transit library so i'll hit enter so that's going to add the reference and we should have the reference in place now so let's collapse this now and now let's go into notifications right so how do you actually consume a message uh, in your in your microservice uh, that is by implementing actually what is known as a consumer in terms of mass transit right so you create one consumer for each of the messages that you want to consume in your receiving a uh, microservice so let's go ahead and create one folder we're going to name consumers 
like that. And then in that one, we're going to implement our consumer. And so remember that the we're going to be using the same contract that we've been using for uh, as a DTO for the uh, request response uh, contract. We're going to be using the same one over here. And so to follow the convention, we're going to be naming our consumer as the name of our uh, contract plus the consumer suffix. So in this case, the contract is send email notification, right? So I'm going to copy that name. And then in the consumers, I'm going to just create new C sharp class. And it's going to be send email notification consumer, all right? And so on this one, and let me collapse things for a bit. Uh, first thing, let's just clean up this stuff. Let's convert to fast code name space. Let's remove this necessary usings. And then to make this a class an actual consumer, what you want to do is just implement one interface that is called iConsumer. So iConsumer, okay? And for that one, let's do control dot. Let's use mass transit right there. And then you have to write a type parameter here. And that type parameter is of the type of the actual contract or the actual message that you're going to consume. So in this case, that is send email notification. Okay, uh, notification, just like that. Okay, so I'll do a control dot here and we're going to be using notifications that contracts, All right? So we got that, let's go ahead and do a control dot to implement the interface right there. So you only have to implement really just one method, which is consume. And this is the method that in this context over here, you're going to receive the actual message that's coming from, uh, from the message broker. So before we can actually implement the consume method, we're going to need two things. The first thing is going to be our uh, logger, right? So we need some, some objects to start logging messages, right? So we can see something in the console. So let's declare private read only. It's going to be iLogger. And then of type, of course, send email notification consumer. And this is going to be our logger. Okay, and then the other thing we're going to need is an instance of iConfiguration because we're going to be retrieving uh, the key to connect to SendGrid and other things uh, from configuration. So let's do private read only, iConfiguration, and then this is going to be configuration, uh, like that. Okay, and then we want to, of course, inject both of them in the constructors. So let me go ahead and do that quickly. Generate constructor. Okay, so that has the logger. And then for some reason, configuration is down here. Let's put it back where it should. And then control dot. Let's go ahead and add parameters. So there you go. So now we have um, both of our things injected right there, configuration and logger right there. So we are ready to start using them. Okay, so now let's go ahead and uh, implement our consume method, right? And so if you scroll down a little bit, First thing we're going to do is to actually pull out that message from the, con the context and into our uh, into our class and our method over here. And so to do that, we're going to just say var, let's say notification equals context dot message, right? And so by the way, let's just remember that this, this is going to be an async method. So async task consume, all right? So it's going to be like that. And now we're pretty much ready to transfer the previous logic that we had uh, for the REST endpoint uh, into our consume method. So let's go back into program.cs over here and let's go ahead and copy. I think we're going to be copying all of this. So let's copy all of this right from program.cs and into here, there. Okay. And so now we just have to fix a few things, right? So the logger is now the actual logger that we have as a variable now. The send grid client, let's do control dot so we can use send grid like that. For configuration, we now have our configuration variable. And then for send grid message, we'll use this other namespace, right? And once again, we'll use the configuration like that. And I think we should be pretty much done. Uh, one more thing, logger at the end, okay? But that's, that's pretty much it. So now we have our uh, consume method fully implemented, right? And so we're not going to be using that REST API endpoint anymore. So now, but we still need to uh, configure this consumer and actually configure mass transit so that it can actually activate the bus as communication between this microservice and RabbitMQ. So to do that, we're going to go back into CS over here. And so just uh, between our build declaration and our app declaration there, we're going to be declaring how we're going to be adding the mass transit services. So for that, we're going to do builder dot services dot add mass transit mass transit like this okay and then for this one we'll have to do control dot using mass transit just like that and then uh, the parameter you're going to receive here is known as the bus configurator that we're going to be using to configure the bus so bus configurator configurator all right so lambda function here all right and so with that bus configurator you want to do two things 
The first thing is to add your consumers. So you want to register your consumers so that it can be actually used. So for that, we're going to do bus configurator dot add consumer. All right, so add consumer. And then here, the type of the parameter is going to be the name of your class. So in this case, it is send email notification consumer. All right, for that one, we're going to do control dot using notifications that consumers, there you go. So that uh, configures the consumer, uh, but then we also need to actually specify that we do want to configure all of the conventions and all of the endpoints and types and objects for Rabbit and Q. All right. So this is the, the this is the one thing why mass transit is better than just than just using the Rabbit and Q client because you don't have to be dealing with exchanges and top I mean exchanges and queues and other things uh, manually. Mass transit will do all of that stuff for you. So all you have to do is the following: bus configurator using Rabbit and Q. And then on this one, you want to specify two parameters. The first one is going to be the context. And the second one is going to be, let's call it Rabbit and Q configurator. All right. And so for this, this is going to open another Lambda function right there. All right. And so on this one, all you have to do is say Rabbit and Q configurator dot configure endpoints. And then you're going to be sending the, the context. All right, so this line here is what's going to uh, actually, like I said, create all of those uh, objects in RabbitMQ so that we can actually uh, create that queue that is going to be receiving those messages, right? Based on the uh, send email configuration consumer. Okay, and so with that in place, uh, we can actually go ahead and uh, scroll down and we, well, we don't need this post uh, over here, right? So it's time to clean up things a bit. See, this entire endpoint goes away. Okay, that goes away. And this is how uh, your uh, class is going to look like. I'm actually going to clean up this a bit more. And this is all we have in program.cs. Okay, so with that in place, let's go ahead and rerun our notification microservice to see if we actually get a queue where we can start receiving messages. So let's go ahead and do control J and I'm going to, I'm going to clean both sides. And let's just do .net run on notifications for now. And so it is going to start. And as you can see, the bus has started. As you can see down here, bus has started. And so I already opened the RabbitMQ uh, UI over here. Okay. So like I said, I already have the Docker container for RabbitMQ running in my box. So that's what allows me to just go into RabbitMQ like this. Okay. And if we go into queues now, you're going to see that now we have our very first queue. So send email notification. As you can see, it just grabbed the same name for the consumer. It, it grabbed that name for the queue that it created. And so that queue is there just waiting for us to start sending messages from the other side. Okay, so that's that's great. And uh, let's now go into the other microservice and also make it so that it can start sending messages. So let's go back into Visual Studio Code over here and I'm going to collapse this. And so let's go, uh, of course, into friends over here. And first thing we're going to do is actually to add the Nugget package, right? The same Nugget package that we added a moment ago for the other microservice. So let's go on the left side and we're going to do .NET add package, mass transit, have it in queue. So it adds the package for the friends microservice. Okay, so collapse that. And then what we're going to do, if you remember, if you go back into program.cs, uh, is that in order to send a message from friends into notifications, we've been using this notifications client, right? So this, this guy over here is doing this, what we're doing in line 29 over here. So what we're going to do is just transform a little bit that class, uh, that notifications client, so that it becomes a client, but to actually send messages uh, to RabbitMQ via mass transit. So let's go into notifications client over here. I'm going to do a few things. So first thing we're going to, we're not going to be using HTTP client, uh, but we're going to be needing a, a couple of things. The first thing is going to be the address, uh, the address of the queue where we want to send messages into, right? So that address is going to be private const string queue address. Okay. And now, well, what is the address? Right. So there's a convention in mass transit that allows you to define um, the, the addresses of things like queues with a short name. So all you have to do is just say queue right and then you want to put the name of the queue so what is the name of the queue let's go back into having queue over here here is the name of our queue i'm just going to click on it so we can see it can we see it better uh well it's right here actually let me just copy that so send email notification okay so back over here i'm going to just paste that over there okay so that is the name of our queue and that's going to be our queue address and now that we have that let's also go ahead and bring in the other ele element which is known as the bus so the bus is the object that you can use to send or pull these messages so that others can consume them so private read only 
right? And this is going to be iBuzz. And let's add the missing space using my strategy there. And this is going to be just Buzz. Okay. And of course, we need to inject Buzz over here instead of the old HTTP client. So this that Buzz Buzz equals Buzz. All right. So now we have our Buzz right there. And now we need to go ahead and modify our logic that sends the email notification so that we can actually do it via this Buzz. Okay, so the first thing to do here is to uh, acquire what is known as an endpoint in the terms of mass transit, which is the actual object that we're going to be using to send the, 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 the message. So to do that, we're going to do the following. So var endpoint equals await, and here we're going to be using the, the bus, right? So we're going to say bus and then get sent endpoint. Okay, get an endpoint, and this guy, what it wants is just the address of the of that endpoint, right? In this case, it's the address of the queue, and that address is going to be just new URI, and then here we're going to just say queue address, right? The variable that we just declared where we have the queue address. And now that we have that, the next thing to do here is to uh, define the what is going to be the message to send, right? The message we're going to send the other way. But it happens to be that it's the same message that we've been using as a contract, as a DTO, uh, to communicate across the REST endpoints, right? So same message here, nothing to change there. And then all we have to do now is to actually change uh, how we send the message. So to, to send the message, what you want to do is just await endpoint dot send. And on send, you're just going to send the notification like that. All right, and then we remove that, and our class has been now fully changed so that we can, uh, you know, send messages via mass transit. So now let's go back into program CS on friends, right? Because we have to also make a few changes over here. So the first change is that in our builder services, we have to now register, uh, of course, our notifications client, right? Because before we were doing this, Right, which is the way that you add an, a typed HTTP client, which is a, is a good way to do it. Uh, but now we need to add an actual uh, a singleton into the service container for the client. So we're going to do the following. We're going to do builder that services that add singleton and then notifications client. All right, it's like that. And of course, best practice will be to have an interface for notifications client, so you don't have this concrete class right there. But but that is fine for this example, right? So we just get a singleton for notifications client. And then the next thing is that we need to configure mass transit, right? Just like we did for the other microservice, we have to add the mass transit services. Uh, but luckily, it's going to be a bit easier for this microservice. But let me go back in the notifications. And then I'm just going to copy this code here from notifications into friends. And I'm going to replace this with this. Uh, so for this, of course, we have to do control dot to add mass transit uh, using mass transit. That's, that's cool. But um, in this case, we don't have a consumer, right? Because we are not consuming any message. We're just publishing the message. And we already did the code for that. So we don't need this line over here. And because we don't have to configure any consumer, we can go back and use the, the super default configuration for, for RabbitMQ. So just by doing this, uh, we're using all the default, default endpoints and default host, default port for RabbitMQ, which makes super simple, at least for, for our demo. But of course, here's where you would configure host, port, and any other uh, things for connecting to RabbitMQ. And I think with that, we are pretty much done. Uh, our endpoint is still going to receive notifications client because we just registered it via as a singleton, like, like that. And then the rest should be pretty much the same. So with that in place, let's go back into our terminal and let's see what happens. Let's see if we can make this work. So I'm going to clean up this and I'll do .NET run. Okay. And we can see that friends is now also connected uh, into the bus, right? The bus has started for friends. And so that means that we should be able to send a request. So let's go back into our request.http file over here. Let's put it at the start over there. And then perhaps, yes, collapse a little bit this so we can see better. Let's go ahead and send a request from, um, uh, from friends and into notifications via mass transit. So let's click on send request. And as you can see, right away, the notification was sent. So notice on the left side, send email notification. And on the right side, we were able to receive it right away without any issues, but this time it went through the RabbitMQ bus. And perhaps we can confirm that, I mean, let's, let's just confirm that, yeah, it's all success, as you can see. This is a tool to accept it, all success. And then we can also, if we go back into RabbitMQ, we're going to see that there's a little bit of a, a spike over here, as you can see, right here. That is the one message that just went through RabbitMQ and then into the other microservice in no time. It was super, super fast, right? And so at this point, we do have our microservices decoupled. So now one of them does not depend on the other. And to prove that, uh, what we can do is just go back 
over here and let's go ahead and do the same exercise we did before so let's just stop the notification microservice and let's see what happens so i'm going to stop this right and then uh, let's try to start sending more requests from our friends microservice so i'm going to go ahead and send one and i'll send two three four five requests right and so notice that friends microservice is not sending any errors right so we keep getting uh, our nice 202 accepted as you can see here 202 accepted there are no errors so from the point of view of friends microservice everything is great right which is what we want to see and then if we go down into our Raveling queue portal what you're going to see is that now we have a queue uh, where uh, the messages keep piling up as you can see here we have five messages piling up uh, which is which is fantastic right so the queue keeps track of all those messages and whenever a notification microservice comes back to life those will be processed right just like we talked about before so if we now go back once again uh, over here and we do and let me clean this we're going to do dotnet run on notifications right dotnet run notice what happens right away uh, our notification microservice receives all of those messages that were pending right and it will go ahead and send all of those emails which is which is fine right because in this case i mean who cares if, if a notification gets sent to the for the friend request right away right it's not really that that much of an issue here so it's fine uh to let that happen whenever there's time right uh, of course, this approach is not going to be fine for every single scenario, right? There are some scenarios where you really want uh, to talk immediately to the other microservice and not be a message, uh, message brokers, uh, but just raise HTTP requests and get an actual response. Uh, but what I find wrong is that most people just jump into that approach right away without even thinking that there's there's other ways to do this, right? So please consider this other approach as your first option for communication between microservices to have full decoupling, right? And if this approach really doesn't work for you for any reason, then start thinking in other ways that you could do that, right? And so, yeah, so that's that's what I wanted to talk to you about today. So I hope you liked it. And if you're liking this video, please watch out other videos in my channel and uh, that I think are, are great for professional.NET uh, developers. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.